Lilia is the latest jungle addition to League of Legends. Historically, all newer champions tend to have a period in which they are completely overpowered and permabanned for a few weeks. But as players figure out how to play these new champions and how to properly abuse their kits, the win rate rises with time. However, Lilia still sits at a pathetic 45.6% win rate, making her the lowest win rate in the game despite the fact that she has been out for over a month. Even though Lilia's win rate in solo queue has been abysmal, she has an abnormally high presence in pro play. Currently in the Korean region, she sits with over a 90% win rate one of the highest win rates in the history of new champions. What makes Lilia so good in pro play, but so bad in solo queue? This is how to play like a challenger. On the surface, Lilia's kit feels pretty underwhelming. Her base damages are pretty low and her only reliable form of CC is her ultimate. Lilia's build is similar to a bruiser's, yet her abilities feel more like a mage's. Many players feel confused by Lilia's identity, and that's reflected in the poor performance of many Lilia players. This champion's actual identity is actually closer to a power farming engage mage that thrives on abusing her move speed to weave in and out of fights. In the current meta, most junglers are very gank centric. Popular champions such as Olaf, Elise, and Lee Sin are quick to clearing their core camps so they can use their early power to apply pressure on the map. This has been the meta for a very long time now, and most junglers that play Lilia are trying this kind of playstyle on her. But this is not how Lilia should be played. Lilia's greatest strengths is in her ability to outfarm almost every other jungler. She's able to establish strong gold and experience leads by getting creative with her clear pathings. She has so many different ways of cutting corners with her clears that she can even outfarm champions like Olaf when she gets ahead. Lilia's fast clear is mainly due to her Q, Blooming Blows. It allows her to farm multiple camps at the same time. Because the radius is so large, it allows Lilia to easily pull aggro of camps that she's going to do next, which closes the distance that she has to walk in order to damage it. This allows her to shave off a few seconds of every camp she clears. Because her Q passive grants her up to 55% movement speed, she can fly through the jungle. Thanks to this additional movement speed, she can get to nearby camps faster and rotate to skirmishes that break out near her. Once she gets a few items, Lilia can be the fastest clearing jungler in the entire game. Her passive Dream Laden Bow is a damage over time burn that applies when she hits a spell. The burn damage works similarly to Leandri's. Most people just see it as a great tank shredding tool for the later stages of the game, but it's actually also extremely good for her early clears. It synergizes extremely well with Hunter's Talisman and extends the burn on Talisman by the duration of the passive's burn. This translates into a huge amount of HP regen for her, which helps her a ton in her otherwise first weak clear. When you start red side, Lilia can kite the red buff over to Raptors and use her Q to hit both of them at the same time. Raptors will then constantly aggro on and off when you do red, while Talisman is constantly healing you back 36 HP per second, meaning that Lilia can actually start leashless on red side while essentially taking no damage. Lilia can also use her E Swirl Seed to pull over the next camp and get a head start where other jugglers can't. She can even kite melee camps like Krugs and Blue Buff with her range in order to essentially take no damage. This insane clear is why her abilities just don't have as much upfront power as other junglers. Because if she did, Lilia would just run over every other jungler in the game. But even if her base stats or her base numbers aren't as good as other junglers, she's still able to be as tanky as other bruisers because she will use her level advantage to bridge that gap. Even if her base kit is not as overwhelming compared to these other junglers, if she's not punished by the enemy jungler, she will outfarm and outlevel them every single game. And unlike other bruisers in the jungle, Lilia doesn't need to worry about falling off because her passive will always keep her somewhat relevant. For your clear path, Lilia can start either red or blue side, but prefers red side if your matchup allows it. Go red, Krugs, Raptors, and then do Wolves and blue before trying to contest Scuttlecrab. On blue side, start blue into wolves, then do your entire red side, 
and contest for the other crab. Lilia's farming tools is the reason why she's such a prominent pick in pro play. Compared to solo queue, competitive play has a lot fewer kills overall due to the fact that less mistakes are being made by pro players and the fact that they also have comms to track the enemy junglers. This means that many junglers will find themselves full clearing on their first rotation and will continue to do so consistently throughout the game. Since Lilia clears so quickly, under a neutral game state, she'll be able to outfarm the enemy jungler without even having to impact the map. She can then use the lead she gains from gold and EXP to secure and steal camps on the enemy side while still being able to come back to her own. A safe, strong, and consistent champion like Lilia can be slotted into many different team compositions with a high level of effectiveness. This is why she's so prioritized in pro play. Lilia's clear speed, however, is not the only reason that there is such a big gap between solo queue and pro play. Lilia is an excellent team fighter because of the setup that she can bring with her ultimate. Lilting Lullaby causes all enemies hit by any of her abilities to become asleep for up to 3 seconds after a 1.5 second delay. Most players try to proc this off of her Q because it's AoE, but it also procs off of her E, which has a global range. But when you have Ruinic Echoes on Lilia, her ultimate can also be procced off of the splash from this item. This means that she can get picks and engage team fights with her E from miles away on the map. She's able to carry out the role of a traditional bruiser by being able to engage and start a team fight without even having to put herself at great danger. Getting good ults like this can make or break a team fight in pro play. Pro players can communicate to each other instantly to be able to follow up on these kinds of engages. However, in solo queue, that's a different story. Sometimes your teammates can be animals without eyes, and you can't expect them to completely follow up on every one of your engages. In solo queue, you tend to focus on yourself because that's the main factor that influences whether you win or lose a game consistently. This means that a team-reliant champion like Lilia is naturally going to be less effective in this type of environment. Laners in solo queue are constantly crying for ganks, so when a good Lilia player knows that she's just supposed to stay in her jungle and farm, her solo queue laners tend to get tilted because she's not ganking anything. Until more players in solo queue understand what Lilia is meant for, her win rate will continue to stay low. For your build, start Hunter's Talisman with Fulfillable Potion, then go into Blue Smite and Ruinic Echoes. If you have extra gold, you can also buy a Pink Ward as well. For your second items, buy either Ninja Tabby or Merc Treads, then purchase Leandries and Rylai's as it synergizes extremely well with the rest of her kit, then go Zhonya's for more survivability in later teamfights. If you need safety earlier on, then you can go also Stopwatch before completing Rylai's. Your last item will depend on the enemy team composition. If they have a lot of AD, go Deadman's Plate. If they're AP based, go Abyssal Mask or Spirit Visage. For runes, most players tend to take Dark Harvest as their main rune. Rune. And although this isn't a bad choice on Lilia, it is not currently the best choice. Phase Rush gives you more speed to go in and out of team fights. A Lilia can proc Phase Rush extremely easily because her passive counts as one hit. So essentially, you only need to hit Q plus one auto to be able to proc Phase Rush. Lilia is not going to be as tanky as traditional bruisers, so you need to make the most out of her movement speed to be able to dodge abilities and weave in and out of team fights. Next, take Nimbus Cloak, Celerity, and Water Walking for even more movement speed. For your secondary, take Chief shot along with Ravenous Hunter, and for rune stats, attack speed, adaptive force, plus armor. Overall, Lilia is a pretty interesting champion that does not conform to normal jungle rules. She gets ahead without ganks and thrives by staying in the jungle. She's the AP love child of Olaf and Darius that trades in a lack of early game power for absolute control of mid to late game. Thanks for watching! You can check out other videos I've made about other champions, and you can subscribe to see more in-depth videos about League. You can follow me on Twitter and Discord for more updates, and that's it. Bye!